Happy New Year! Welcome to 16th episode of the Curiosity the Science Show. This is January 2021 episode covering what moved the science in the last month. As usual, this episode covers topics across the disciplines including COVID-19 vaccine, new virus variant, depression, parenting, doc training and so on, plus news, observances and opportunities for the students and young scientists. The first story of the month is about the, the schools, you know, does the schools actually determine your admission to the Ivy League top tier universities or not? As we all know that the schools getting, you know, your kids to the school, top schools are really difficult. Even schools, some of the private schools here in India interviews the parents for the, uh, the admission of the awards. So uh, the, the latest study published last month says that admission into the selective high school, of course, we all know that it's very difficult to achieve as admission into the top universities. However, uh, this new study found that elite schools doesn't help students academically any more than the less prestigious ones, including the students from more disadvantaged neighborhoods. And the story is same, more or less same here in India as well, right? If you look at IITs, for example, IIT Bombay or IIT Delhi, and look at the new uh, students, uh, they are, uh, you know, it's not the case that mostly the, the private schoolers are cracking JE. No, even the government school students are cracking JE. So schools doesn't matter much. That is what this new uh, study also reveals. The next story about uh, cognitive bias for JTC with you know, uh, with the conspiracy theories like COVID-19, fake news and conspiracy theories like the Chinese conspiracy. So people who believe in the conspiracy theories have a cognitive bias known as jumping to conclusions. So without even looking at uh, all the evidences, they actually tend to conclude judgmental about uh, the reality. That is what this JTC is all about. And they also have the tendency to perform hasty decisions based on little evidence and a preference for intuitive general thinking style as opposed to analytical thinking. So these people, these uh, people who believe in conspiracy theory shares a lot of interesting phases of psychological uh, tendencies, including, you know, uh, trusting to the intuition rather than, you know, intuition and emotions rather than rational thinking, the analytical thinking. So the third story of the week is about social media use by the young adults. So young adults who increase the social media use were more likely to develop depression that is what the new study says so those using more than 300 minutes per day were 2.8 times as likely to become depressed within the next six months so initial social media use led to increased depression but initial depression did not lead to the change in the social media use so it is a, a vicious cycle you know and uh, i strongly urge everybody to reduce uh, or, or altogether get out of the Facebook and other social media. It actually leads to better emotional well-being because, uh, you know, this social media kind of compares ourselves with other people and that lead to the depression. Undocumented immigrants far less likely to commit crimes in the United States than its own citizens. Crime rates among the undocumented immigrants are just a fraction of those the U.S. born neighbor. According to a first of its kind analysis of Texas arrest and conviction records. So till date, it was thought that the immigrants, especially those illegal immigrants are far more likely to commit the crimes. But this is actually the adjusted, you know, this is normalized uh, values indicates that it's not the case. You know, the, the citizens are more likely to commit uh, major offenses and crimes rather than illegal immigrants in the US. The next story of the week is about, uh, you know, basic income. We have covered this in earlier episodes of the Curiosity as well. Simply giving the cash with a few strings attached could be one of the most promising ways to reduce the poverty and insecurity in the developing world. You know, just giving the cash uh, without uh, asking for them to return back or you have to work or, uh, you know, no strings attached. Just give the, the money. It's like donation. The government pays out uh, basic income to all its citizens. So that is called the basic basic income scheme you know in Finland it has been done also as in 1970s in Canada so today over 63 countries have at least one such program the so-called conditional cash transfer or CCTs improve the people's lives over a long term that is what this study says drinking alcohol blocks the release of norepinephrine a chemical that promotes attention when we want to focus on something in the brain this is what uh, the new study says so it was not known to the science before 
very interesting so uh, looks like it's uh, it might be known for the sciences for ages but not the case this may contribute to why drinkers have difficulty paying attention while under the influence next story of the month is about the mask the mask considerably reduced covid-19 cases in germany 20 days after becoming mandatory face masks have reduced the number of new infections by around 45 percentage economic costs are close to zero compared with other public health measures so face masks really help to curtail the spread of the covid-19 so as we will eventually see in this episode of curiosity face masks should be combined with social distancing the physical distancing you see 2020 is a preview of how bad things can get if we don't fix the climate change and uh, that will lead to other systemic problems. That is what the latest uh, Lancer report says. In 2018, in the US alone, the pollution caused more than 68,000 people to die prematurely. And here in India also, in the last episode of Curiosity, we have covered that the air pollution has led to almost one lakh and more than one lakh, you know, the child casualty, child mortalities uh, because of the, the air pollution. So uh, this is all uh, the preview of how bad the things can get if we don't really pay more attention to the climate change and our own environment. Study links regular use of Fox News, Twitter and Facebook to reduce knowledge about COVID-19. It provides evidence that Americans' media consumption habits and trust in government predicts their level of knowledge about COVID-19. You see the social media uh, because this is a breeding ground for the fake news. Scientists have developed a way of predicting if the patients will develop Alzheimer's disease by analyzing their blood. It's basically, uh, you know, the blood, blood plasma based biomarker study of this uh, uh, amyloid, beta amyloid protein as well as neurodegeneration uh, biomarkers in the plasma, you know, and also tau proteins. The model based on two proteins had an 88% success rate in predicting the onset of Alzheimer's in the same patients over the course of four years. Green Green space exposure is physiologically important to your health. It can enhance mental well-being and lower levels of the stress. A new brain imaging found that viewing green space in urban landscapes elicits substantial activity in key areas of the brain related to attention and stress regulation. Friends, it's better to expose ourselves to the green space every day. That means more outdoor activities. Mindfulness-based cognitive therapy reduces activation in brain regions related to self-blame in patients in remission from the depression. These areas of the brain are linked to the emotions such as guilt and embarrassment. Reduced self-blame from this therapy was linked to greater self-kindness and self-compassion. By the way, mindfulness is quite uh, related to my meditation. Some people believe that it's a, it's a kind of meditation, but the difference here, as you can see in this diagram, the mindfulness is hyper awareness about everything what is happening around the world. So you can do this mindful meditation on a traffic jam for example or if you're riding a bike or uh, you know while uh, uh, washing your dishes uh, 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 or laundering anything you know the mindfulness is being really aware of your surrounding but the meditation is just opposite just get all the thoughts away that is a classical uh, form of the meditation you see the emptiness but the mindfulness is uh, you know flourishing with hyper sensory perceptions you know, that is what the mindfulness meditation is about. The next story of the month is about the parenting. Dads engaged in their kids' lives can help to improve their mental health and behavior. Teens in low-income families whose fathers are more frequently engaged in reading, playing and providing necessities such as clothes and food during the childhood have fewer behavioral and emotional problems. Dogs trained using punishment for incorrect behavior show evidence of higher stress and anxiety levels compared to the dogs trained with reward-based methods. So reward is better than punishment, be it in the case of dog training or also for parenting, you see, uh, for school education as well. So dogs from averse method like punishment uh, also responded more pessimistically to the ambitious situation so you know reward is better than punishment that is what this new study behavior behavior study this is really linked to the cognitive development and psychology and uh, you know the early childhood education right so this is what the the transdisciplinary dialogue is all about uh, yet another story about the dog 
The dogs may never learn that every sound of a word matters. So dogs are not that intelligent, you see. So uh, earlier episode of Curiosity featured the crow. You know, the ravens are really intelligent. So it looks like dogs are not that intelligent, you know. That despite their great hearing, dogs cannot tell the difference between words which differ only in one speech sound, that syllable. You know, dog versus dig. So that kind of thing. Or E, right? Dog versus dig. The dogs cannot differentiate it. So that's what the, the new brain wave study with the functional MRI scan on the dogs did it. So this explained why the number of words dogs learn to recognize remain very low. You know, so the next study is about LED lights. So, of course, it's not like normal LED, but these are UV LED lights. So, LED lights found to kill the coronavirus efficiently, quickly, and cheaply a global first in fight against COVID 19. This is by the Tel Aviv University uh, in Israel. They have published the finding in uh, Nature. So, this finding suggests that the UV LEDs can be installed in air conditioning and water systems. I've learned that, you know, the, the New York subway, they started the air conditioning to disinfect the, you know, the, the air uh, from the mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, to curtail the TB uh, thing. So, you know, the spread of the tuberculosis. So, exactly like that, now the LEDs can also, it's quite cheap as well, it's very promising, you know. It requires less than half a minute to destroy more than 99.9% .9 of the coronaviruses. So, very interesting. Women overestimate men's attraction to the thin female fashion models. That is what the new study finds. So, it looks like men are not that much uh, attracted to thin uh, women, you know, so they overestimate that men's attraction. That's <laughs> very interesting. And vitamin D deficiency found in over 80 percentage of the COVID-19 patient. That is what the new study says. We have covered this topic about the importance of vitamin D in the last episode of Curiosity as well. And mask not enough to stop COVID-19 spread without physical distancing. That is what the new study says. So every material tested dramatically reduced the number of droplets that were spread. But at a distance of less than six feet, enough droplets to potentially cause illness still made it through several of the materials. So if it is less than six feet, then masks are not that efficient. So we really have to maintain the physical distancing too in addition to the mask. So people who grow up with aggressive parents are more likely to use anger words such as mad, hate and stupid when annoyed or irritated with their romantic partners. So, you know, the way that we brought up really matters a lot. So these movements can escalate into more intense conflict unless we stop repeating our parents' communicating patterns. Comparison is a thief of joy as the potem goes. So that is what the new study also finds. Relative deprivation, the belief that your situation is worse than others or that the others are doing better than you can trigger anger and resentment and is associated with risk-taking behavior like gambling. Having hope of the future is protective against this. So this is why, you know, the, the extreme social media use is not that good as we have already covered in this episode of the Curiosity. Social media is something like a filter bubble and it also uh, functions like, uh, you know, we, we, we tend to feel ourselves as uh, less important and our achievement as less important with our peers. You know, so that is what this comparison, that is actually the killjoy. We have already covered in this episode that, uh, you know, the Facebook and other social media extensive usage is led to depression because we keep on comparing with our peers, with their, you know, with their success. And we tend to believe that our own success is nothing in compared with our peers' success. So this leads to uh, a dramatic increase in our own, this lead to dramatic increase in uh, the depression and, uh, you know, the other mental illness as well. The next story of the month is also about depression. The teens, those are unhappy with the physical appearance are at significant risk of depression by early adulthood. Heightened risk ranges from 50% to 285% by the age of 18 with the depression severity greater in boys. So dislike of one's physical appearance affects up to 61% of the teens worldwide. So if you know someone who think that themselves doesn't have a good physical appearance, so it's time to help them up. So let's help each other. Next is the news from the last month. 
So first is COVID-19 treatment and vaccine update. As we all know that there are a lot of things happening uh, in the last month, you know, many of the vaccines are now in the market. So first is about the treatment. We now have one approved treatment. The FDA has already cleared that Gilead Sciences Remdesivir is now an approved medication for COVID-19, you know, in the US. So we also have four candidates that are phase three clinical trials, uh, no change from the last month's episode and two candidates for phase two clinical trials as well. Coming to the vaccines, we now have five candidates at the phase three clinical trial. By the way, none of these got the full FDA or WHO approval, you know, they are still under trial, the phase three clinical trial. But many of these vaccines have got emergency approval. The first is University of Oxford or AstraZeneca Chadox and COV2 vaccine. So UK grants emergency approval plus other three countries including India how approved for the emergency use of this vaccine, the Chanox vaccine, which is nothing but ad adenovirus, uh, you know, uh, recombinant adenovirus vector vaccine. So the second one is Moderna Therapeutics, which is basically an RNA vaccine, you see, it's 94% is its efficacy, while the earlier one, the, the University of Oxford vaccine is only 70%, look. So Moderna vaccine clears the FDA emergency approval plus also in the Canada emergency use approval it has cleared. And the third and most famous among all the vaccine candidate is the BioNTech Pfizer which is a German uh, vaccine which has been developed by uh, Turkish immigrant workers you know uh, which has 90 percentage efficacy and it has cleared both WHO and FDA emergency approval and also it has been approved in 18 other countries around the world. So this vaccine is really going to be uh, uh, you know uh, a great success most probably let us wait and watch and uh, we have a new entry Novavax and Johnson & Johnson's recombinant vector uh, vaccine so the, there are three candidates that phase two clinical trials Sinovac, CanSino and the latest entry is Sanofi and GlaxoSmithKline they are at the phase two clinical trial and from here in India uh, the latest news that it's a uh, today's news is that Oxford vaccine has been cleared by the expert panel for the India so uh, at any time we will be uh, you know getting this vaccine and uh, the preliminary reports say that it will be approximately uh, 600 rupees uh, the cost of this vaccine but I'm more interested to see when this uh, Pfizer vaccine will be here in India because that is uh, the, the current demand all around the world is the Pfizer's vaccine uh, is a lot more more uh, success rate is a lot more higher as well uh, you know of course we do have several limitations with the Pfizer vaccine because it demands better logistic support let's wait and watch and the biggest story uh, perhaps one of the most famous science story of the last month is the new cov 2 the coronavirus mutant uh, the mutant is called H69 V70 has been emerged in the UK so as you can see this uh, graph uh, you know this is basically this uh, red colored in each of these uh, bar chart is the new variant. So if you look back in October month, then November slowly started emerging, but by December it has become uh, uh, dominant, you know. Now in the UK it is uh, its dominant variant, this uh, H69 uh, V70 and we have several reports from here in India as well, in Noida for example, and approximately 10 people have been confirmed to have this virus, the new variant. But how does it matter? Does it actually increase the severity? No. The reports have clearly says that this new variant doesn't have more severity, but the variant is the transmissibility is very high. As I've al already told in last episode of Curiosities, that uh, in, in it's a general pattern in the viral infection that whenever the, uh, you know, the transmissibility is increased, the severity is decreased. You know, so it doesn't cause more severity. And is it something new? No, we have already covered in this channel about D614G, uh, that is a, a new variant that has been detected in the European Union in February 2020. And another variant is A222V uh, that is uh, has been detected in Spain in June 2020. Uh, both are the, the variants. So by the way, these are evolving, right? Just like us or any animal or plant or uh, microbes, or viruses are living beings and it, it keeps on evolving. And I find it uh, ludicrous that many people who are strong supporters of the intelligent design and creative special theory of special creativism, you see, who think that the Darwinian evolution is uh, wrong and uh, the, the whole world has been designed by the God. 
you know the, the creative design or intelligent design uh, they even believe that you know the, the covid 19 the new variant is emerging it's evolving so how is that it's paradoxical isn't it so in this new variant this x69 v70 there are 17 mutations in the spike protein region that has been detected you know these are the 17 uh, uh, the mutations or as you can see that spike protein the large number of mutations are in the spike protein and also there are mutations in the or of one AB that is open reading frame as you see that viruses actually cleverly use this open reading frame because their genome size is very small and they want to express as many proteins as possible so there are uh, you know six possible open reading frame in any of the uh, you know the uh, duplex molecule like uh, double uh, you know the, the uh, double stranded RNA or double stranded DNA and also the mutations occurs in OR of number 8 and N so majority of mutations are in the spike protein and the studies have shown that the mutation happens at furin uh, you know uh, pro protease cleavage site this is in the spike protein as you can see if you enlarge the spike protein you can see that the cleavage site of the furin furin protease this is where this new mutation has happened you know so Indian COVID-19 infection have closed one crore you know but uh, fortunately as uh, Shahid Jamil and other virologists are saying that the worst have been over that is what uh, the experts are now predicting uh, we are actually seeing uh, the decreasing decreases in the COVID-19 infection rate which is really good for this country vaccine distribution is like election duty as per the latest uh, uh, statement by our honorable prime minister and it's really exciting and I'm ready to be part of this uh, uh, vaccine distribution work if the government interests me you know as a, as a government worker so yes it is it's, it's going to be a, a huge uh, it's a challenge for the the country as such because we are the world's largest democratic country you know and population wise we are uh, almost e eclipsing the China so it's a big task and we all have to contribute for this noble cause and along with this vaccine stories and vaccine new vaccine development uh, you know so as the fake news uh, it's also on the rise so fake news by anti-vaxxers are on the rise vaccine turns you to zombies that is what the one of the fake news says and needle disappears uh, you know it's uh, the fake news about the disappearing needles uh, with the vaccine needles and another uh, story which I, I came across my own uh, you know social circle in the whatsapp group where I'm part of you know the, the colleagues group that uh, a nurse dies in Alabama due to the vaccine you know it's another fake story and vaccine alters our own DNA all these are fake story friends never trust whatsapp university and any of the social media for this matter and what is the consequence of this fake news have you ever thought the latest study shows that approximately 70 percentage of the Indians are hesitant to take the vaccine uh, because they believe that all these fake news are true you know so human challenge trial for COVID-19 uh, gets approved in the UK so by the way human challenge trial means deliberate infection on human volunteers with COVID-19 uh, that actually hasten up uh, it speeds up the vaccine development at the same time of course human challenge uh, trial have got lots of eth ethical dimensions and uh, serious ethical questions too so how ethical and how moral it is to infect uh, the the volunteers you know with the COVID-19 because this is a serious illness you know so but still it gets approval in the UK yet another positive news from the last month is that our honorable prime minister have laid foundation stone for the largest renewable energy plant in the Kutch area in the Gujarat a green city in every state in, in India you know so that is the latest initiative by the Union government so uh, last month also so two of the very famous uh, people the obituaries includes Rodam Narasimha uh, professor Narasimha had been uh, earlier the Indian Academy of Sciences uh, president and also you know he is a PhD from Princeton University uh, aged 87 years and of course he was a professor of aeronautical engineering in the industry of sciences in Bangalore and more importantly he is a very well known uh, uh, historian uh, of the sciences as well as a philosopher of sciences you know and also in, in, in involved in uh, science communication and popularization because he is the one who is behind this uh, magazine the famous science magazine called uh, Russell Lines published by Indian Academy of Sciences in Bangalore and uh, Sugata Kumari is a very well known uh, in a poet in Malayalam in Kerala 
aged 86 years many of her poems feature the importance of the environment uh, you know and environmental protection and conservation as well as the climate change both of these well-known figures are survived by their writings you know, that i'm sure are going to inspire millions of the forthcoming generations so there is a new evidence that confirms that indus valley civilizations dishes included pig and buffalo meat that is what the new archaeological study reveals and another uh, in, uh, story from the last month is an iit madras covid 19 cluster more than 100 positive cases when the iit madras opened its gates for the phd scholars man-made stuff outweighs that of the biomass that is an alarming trend you know anthropocene the current geological epoch is known as anthropocene isn't it the epoch of human beings and this new finding is equally alarming last month i also watched a very interesting ted talk by Amanda Little on tasting the climate change and how the food uh, is changing because of the climate change. I strongly urge you to have a look at this TED talk. All these links are in the show notes of this video. You know, please have a look at the show notes. And 2014 to 2018, the leopard population in India have increased 60 percentage, which is a very good news. Another news from archaeology is that uh, the archaeologists uncover the ancient street food shop at Pompeii in Italy, which is dated at AD 79. As you can see, this is where the street food, if you like street food, look almost 2000 years back in Italy as well. The street food were very common. As you can see, this is what they might have solved, this fresco beautiful fresco and still survived you see uh, of the chicken and hen and other animals you know and also they, they have this uh, uh, vessels for the wine the entire city of uh, Pompeii uh, was destroyed and submerged in uh, magma when this volcanic eruption happened in that city uh, in AD 79 you see so it's almost 2000 years back another story from the last month is about this so it looks like a, a you know a coffee grinder isn't it but this is basically a, 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 a spacecraft you see so Hayabusa 2 is a Japanese spacecraft so pieces of an asteroid found inside the space capsule so the mission accomplished after six years in the space JAXA's, JAXA is a, a NASA equivalent of the Japan, you see, Japanese space agency is known as JAXA. Hayabusa 2 spacecraft delivered its samples of the asteroid Ryugu to the Earth on December 5th, 2020. Yet another astronomy related story is a pair of lonely planet-like objects born like stars. So this pair has been uh, detected uh, by the University of Berlin team. So it's, a, it's an exotic binary system composed of two young planet-like objects orbiting around each other from a very large distance so uh, this uh, you know uh, binary system is named as OPH 98 formed approximately 3 million years back so it is uh, comparatively a younger formation you see and without stars so it's a, something like a star so, so without sun how the planets can be so maybe an aftermath of the star forming uh, event isn't it so another uh, space related story from the last month is a dark storm on neptune reverses its direction possibly shedding a fragment that is what the astronomers uh, of the NASA has revealed using Hubble Space Telescope. So they watched a mysterious vortex on the Neptune abruptly steer away from a likely death on the giant blue planet. So coming to observances of this month uh, in this January, for this World Braille Day, you know, for the blind people, uh, you know, the only way for them to read is through the brain. So 24th is International Day for Education, National Girl Child Day, you know, so in India it is Girl Child Day, but internationally it's a day of education. So it's a day for all of us, uh, all the, the, you know, all the students, we are all students, isn't it? We are learning everything new. So education matters immensely, friends. And 27th of January is International Day for Commemoration of the Memory of the Victims of Holocaust. So every time when I hear this word Holocaust brings me uh, the memories of the Berlin Holocaust Museum called, you know, the Topography of Terror. And also the book which I read many years ago, a very famous book called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And the quote from this book is, uh, the one thing you can't take away from me is the way I choose to respond to what you do to me. A very stoic, a profound stoic wisdom, isn't it? Coming to astronomy related observances in the January. 
second is perihelion when the earth is nearest to the sun you see and second uh, to third is a peak of quadrantid meteor shower and fourth is moon meets asteroid vesta and 21 is if you have a telescope you can see the lunar straight wall the so called rupus recta and 23rd is mercury at its greatest eastern elongation and 28th is wolf moon near Gemini and Cancer. By the way, this picture you can see a line here. These are nothing but lunar craters. And this line is something called Rupus Recta or lunar straight line or straight wall. So you can watch it on 21st of this month if you have a good, uh, you know, uh, telescope or super powerful uh, uh, camera. Po even point and shoot camera is helpful. Coming to opportunities. You know, first is general opportunities. Summer internship at University of Tokyo, February 1st, 2021 is the deadline. By the way, all the links are in the show notes of this video. DST NGP, that is National Geospatial Program, call is open now. 9 January is the deadline. 2021 Commonwealth Masters Fellowship, UK. Uh, you know, UK Commonwealth Program, call is open now. 21st February is the deadline. DAE, that is Department of Atomic Energy, BARC, that is Baba Atomic Research Center, Nuclear Recycle Board appointments are open now. January 31st is the deadline. 105 Government Bark Research, uh, uh, you know, Junior Research Fellowship are open now. Uh, you know, please have a look at the site. Cruise proposal, if you are into marine biology or oceanography or ocean related research, you can apply for this cruise. That is a Ministry of Earth Sciences vessel. Uh, that is, uh, you know, that, that will depart from April 2021 to March 2022. 5th January is the deadline. JN Tata Endowment Scholarship 2021 to 22. The call is open now. And Caltech LIGO, that is Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, uh, you know, SUR of Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship. The call is open now uh, and, uh, you know, till January 8th is the deadline. And coming to awards, CSAR Young Scientist Award 2021, 31st January is the deadline. Junior Scholarship and Young Researcher Award 2021 by Lady Tata Memorial Trust, 15 January 2021 is the deadline. Indian National Science Academy, that is INSA Medal for the Young Scientist 2021 is open now. So as 2021 UNESCO Russia Mental Leave International Prize in Basic Sciences, Deadline is 15th March. By the way, Mentally he is a scientist who, who actually, uh, you know, uh, invented the periodic table, as you can remember. MARC Innovation Cup 2021, the call is open now. 31st January is the deadline. UNESCO Equatorial Guinea International Prize for Research in Life Sciences call is also open now. And coming to PhD fellowship, especially in abroad, Higgs Prize PhD fellowship theoretical physics in University of Edinburgh in the UK is open now. Warwick Chancellor's International scholarship 21st uh, January is the deadline Warwick in the UK Oxford Whitenfield Hoffman a scholarship and leadership program 8 January is a deadline Eiffel scholarship in France for international students 8 January is a deadline Cambridge International Scholarship 8 January is a deadline there are 26 fully funded PhD studentship in environmental research National Environmental Research Council of the UK the Nottingham BBSRC Doctoral Training Research Partnership 20th January is a deadline uh, if you are interested to do the PhD in Hungary Stipendium Hungarian Scholarship call is open now and that's all for this episode of Curiosity. I hope you like this video. If you like it, please click the like button and share it in your relevant groups. I will see you soon in the next video. Until then, goodbye and please take care of yourself. And if you can, please take someone else too. Goodbye.